Hello everyone and welcome to another Krebs Coho Replay cast. This time around we're going to be having a game on Woofies, the 2v2 map that we do not usually see um, played out on. So if you guys have been following my live casts, I did a live cast on Woofies as well. However, understandably, I bet many of you guys have not seen it. And I don't really blame you because the live ca cast quality was not the absolute best in terms of lagging and stuttering and all that sort of bad stuff you don't like to see. So anyway, this is going to be a game on Woofies that you guys will hopefully enjoy. I will introduce the players that we will be looking at today. We've got Mr. Nikki. Uh, depending on what side of the world you come from, the pronunciation could be a bit different. I believe in America it might be Nikki, and over here in the UK it might be Nakey. But I will be calling him Nakey just because I believe the EI is supposed to be an S sort of sound. But if I got that wrong, sorry for my pronunciation, and hopefully um, it will improve. I will work on my English. Then again, I am English. But anyway, so onto the Brits where he's g that is going to be Conklin playing as the Brits. Uh, we've got Vermacht, Rom Jim. So Rom Jim being a quite a popular player, um, very well known. And Sony Black Reborn, also another well known player. Both of them playing as the Vermacht. So Woofies. Woofies, I like to compare to Red Bull Express. And I know some of you guys are probably jumping on me at the moment for saying that. You know, Woofies has nothing to do with uh, Red Bull Express. It's nothing the same. In my opinion, it is in one respect, and that is that the maps have instant action. This is quite a small map for 2v2. You're just asking for the opponents to be flinging themselves at each other and doing as much damage to each other as possible. Sort of the same as Red Bull Express, where everything is channeled right to the center. Okay, but that is my opinion on Woofies and Red Bull Express. You don't have to agree, and you know, I think we can find common ground in finding entertaining, entertaining replay, should I say. Okay, so the MG from Sony Black Reborn is pinning down some engineers. We've got riflemen coming from a barracks that's built right on the edge of the American territory. Sort of an interesting um, placement of the barracks. Why? Because since it is so close to the front, considering that this map is so small, you have an opportunity to just move your guys back to the uh, barracks and reinforce them there rather than having to retreat all the way back to your base. That is always a tactical sort of option. So it looks like Sony Black Reborn has gone for a few... Uh, hmm, well he has an MG, what else does he have? He has a motorbike, so quite a harassive um, strategy. It looks like the uh, m motorbike is going to be going around to harass, get up in the face of people. Uh, the MG is going to be suppressing. Rom Jim likewise is going for a motorbike as well. And as you guys can see, the motorbikes are just absolutely killing these guys. The MG doing a very good job on suppressing them. But the motorcycle is getting right on in there and to uh, fling some bullets into the guts of these men, however uh, fatal that may be. And it looks like also Rom Jim has another MG out. So wow, two MGs. Or did the other one die? Could that have been from Sony Black? Yes, Sony Black had the other MG. So it seems like we have a sort of mirror, uh, mirror image of strategies for the Wehrmacht at the moment. Uh, both of them have MGs, both of them have motorcycles, so kind of interesting thing to see there. Sony Black Reborn has his Volksgrandeer squad out, so he has a mixture of units, so that the uh, motorcycle, the MG, and the Volksgrandeers. Sort of interesting choice to do that. Um, I suppose I could live with that. Volksgrandeers are obviously going to be doing quite a decent job at combating the units. However, they're not going to be a decent, do a decent job if they're going to constantly retreat. So the um, Wehrmacht on the fallback, just hiding behind the fence, both squads of the Americans and the uh, infantry section just focus firing on the Volksgrandeers. However, they're not going to do that much um, if they're just going to stand out in the open like that. They're just asking to take shots and be absolutely murdered in that respect. 
The MG is trying to get in there to put down some suppressive fire. Is he going to be pointing the right way or is he not recognize that there's a flanking rifleman squad? No, he does not recognize it. Could this mean the end of the of the MG? It looks very much so if unless the MG can get right on out of there and oh gosh, no. If there was a, a bit of a quicker reaction time, the MG could have gone out of there. And this looks like a premature sort of... Uh, Retreat by the riflemen. They could have finished off that pioneer squad before retreating. They definitely could have done that and totally taken them out. That would have been quite a loss for the Wehrmacht losing an MG and a pioneer in one fatal swoop. So I saw a I saw a mortar pit by Conklin. So the mortar pit is going to be absolutely useful, especially on Wolfies. As I keep on saying that this map is so small. Um, the mortar, I know it's not; it doesn't have the same range as in 2.601 anymore. I believe it is uh, slightly decreased. However, the mortar still has a quite a large range. I mean, it will be able to reach out right onto the onto the defensive lines of the Wehrmacht. And what is this? Two snipers out from Rom Jim. A very heavy investment into T1. Kind of interesting to see from the Wehrmacht. Usually they might get only out maybe three, four squads out before they go on to T2. Thing to note about um, Woofies, if we switch on over to tactical map really quick, is look at the amount of fuel points. There's next to none, and they're all low fuel points. We do have a plus eight, but that is due to the fact that there is an HQ command truck right on top of that sector. So very limited in respects of teching up. That is probably why we see more uh, T1 units than we usually would see. That is why we don't have the teching up going as fast. Plus 20 um, for Sony Black Reborn. However, he has the ability to go on to T2 if he so wishes. Instead, he's going to invest quite a bit into his T1 infantry. So if you just look at what he has, he has a motorbike. He has uh, two... Um, Two thingies, two rolling folks, grenadiers, not two thingies, and MG, and I believe he might have lost that MG and almost the Pioneer Squad just a bit earlier there. So kind of unfortunate losses for him. Switching on over to Rom Jim to see what he has. Rom Jim, two snipers, a motorbike, an MG, and a flame pioneer. Now he only has one pioneer, I believe. Oh, and that was actually just killed. Yes, because he just disappeared off of that entire unassigned squad bit. Um, so no pioneers for Rom Jim. Wow, very surprising that he would just lose his pioneers like that. Sort of uh, unfortunate losses for both players at the beginning of the game. Now both players, I would say, look quite cautious in how they're going to be um, going about this game. There's not much action happening at the moment. It's just um, the players go going about the battlefield, seeing if they can find any lone squads and taking them out, but really just trying to avoid any major engagements at the moment. And so that is actually quite a wise choice by the Brits. They can, um, since they have a fuel advantage by having more of the strategic points at the moment, they can obviously tech up to their uh, to their field support truck and get out sappers. And this is what we have, the sappers coming out and putting down that 25 pound gun howitzer. And the field support truck actually went down over here with the casualty clearing center right in between all the sandbags. So a very uh, strategic defensive sort of positioning of that casualty clearing center. We can see some uh, medics going about the field, I'm sure, quite soon when we start seeing some casualties. But oh geez, this is just a absolute... A uh, huge movement of men moving in towards the Vermont, trying to make some sort of push. The MG's having a very difficult time in terms of trying to um, suppress them. The recon squads, two of them, are focus firing on the MG to try and take it out. Both squads, the Americans, um, riflemen, trying to take it out. And yes, the MG is taken out. The snipers from a distance, should I say, absolutely sniping these uh, men away one by one, bit by bit, and just wearing down their force. So the riflemen do need to get out of there because they are low on health already. The infantry section is taking a lot of damage. And, you know, we just saw the entire Wehrmacht line get destroyed here. But look at all the rolling men on the field. Um, as I said in the previous game, they're not rolling on the floor laughing. They are rolling on the floor in death. It's absolutely painful. You can just see the blood splatters on the ground. You can see these men rolling around in agony. It is fortunate that the, <laughs> the medics are getting in there to at least help these um, wounded, suffering men. So that is a more gruesome um, 
<laughs> grotesque look outlook at the battle, I suppose you could say. The interesting thing about Wolfies, if you guys actually look at the map, and this is just a totally artistic sort of approach to the map, is that if you just notice, there's actually um, these sort of climbing planks, uh, there's fences, and there's tires on the ground. So this must have been some sort of uh, some sort of training ground for military purposes. So kind of interesting. I like these sort of different um, looks of the battlefields every map has basically a personality of its own so we have the royal commandos coming out from Conklin that is why we see the commandos coming out of that um, glider doing kind of a bit of damage but not so much as they should have been because they were focused fire on by quite a bit of men now I hear an M8 somewhere and that is the 30 cal on top of it so that is the M8, M8 by Nike um, just going around doing what it can M8 uh, with its armored plates and armored skirt should I say and it's 30 cow Ob obviously very obvious upgrades for an M8 just because without all those upgrades it's kind of a weak unit you know it doesn't do the best against killing infantry and without those armored skirts it's gonna be quite easy to destroy so you put in quite an investment in terms of munitions into those M8s. So we'll see what's happening over in the American base. They have the uh, barracks out, they have the WSC over here, and they have the motor pole. So kind of interesting to see both the motor pole and the WSC out like this. Most likely the WSC is out due to the fact that there are snipers on the field. Now I would actually maybe like to see a jeep. A jeep in combination with the recon squads could actually take out those snipers quite easily. You wouldn't have to go for the WSCs. And what is this? Oh, Romjim going straight to his Sturm Armory, I believe. Let's see over here. Yes, he does have a Sturm Armory out with a Nerbalwerfer and that Puma. So the Puma getting right on in there. Getting right frontal and mean and green against <laughs> these uh, commandos. Just absolutely chasing them away. These commandos obviously not going to stand a chance against such bolts coming out of such a deadly armored car. Even from a distance, this thing becomes deadly. Obviously, it's not going to be as accurate, but still, these bolts are just the, uh, an infantry squad's worst nightmare. Now, this uh, Puma does have to be a bit cautious about the riflemen here because they do not have the bars on them, so it is kind of likely they might have got upgrades in terms of stickies. Unfortunately, we didn't actually see any stickies coming out. So perhaps the American has instead inv invested in all those upgrades for his rifleman instead to go for his buildings. Now that might make sense since we si saw the supplier that was upgraded to supplier 1 um, and we saw WSC and motor pole. So the lack of fuel on this map has really restricted the players to um, being kind of careful about how they're going to spend their fuel and trying to stack up the importances in order of what they should go for. So the Grenadiers just landing on a mine here, probably by an American engineer. Uh, the Americans pushing in on the left hand side, uh, being chased away by a Puma, aggressed a bit, losing two of their men, and this is what I mean, even though the Pumas are w far away, long distance, they can still do quite a bit of damage. There you go, a third gentleman just falling on the ground in painful death. And two Pumas on the field, so switching on over to Rom Jim, see what he has. No doctrinal choice yet by him, but two Pumas, um, a motorcycle, a Nerbalwerfer, somewhere on the in the uh, base, I believe. Where could it be? That's the MG. There's the Nerbalwerfer. That is probably going to be quite a harassive sort of thing. We do have that 25-pounder uh, gun howitzer. Nerbalwerfer is going to do a lot of. Um, damage against the 25 pound howitzer considering that there is no um, improved emplacements um, because the Brit has went for royal command commandos then you know those emplacements aren't going to be as strong as they could possibly be okay so a bit of a 25 pound gun howitzer going down the Nurburgrifer strikes just on the ground over here you can see the incendiary going about and what was that I just missed it but was that a lieutenant or something or an infantry section it looked like some sort of kill I'm not exactly sure what it was but it looked like a vital kill on that Puma just managing to take out that one gentleman that entire squad I believe the M8 just getting on in there, just chasing it away, damaging it a little bit. Obviously the uh, armored car can't do much against the uh, M8. I have been kind of lucky a few times with Pumas that the first few shots off of them have managed to kill the 50 cow gunner on top of the M8. So kind of an interesting thing to see that. Uh, switching on over to Conklin. 
Royal Commandos, Nike, any choice, no choice yet. So I believe this is going to be a bit of a long game, 14 minutes in so far, but as soon as they start reaching some more um, more of their general progression, their teching orders, their later teching orders should I say, their T3, T4 for the Wehrmacht, and likewise for the Americans, then we'll start seeing a lot more action. Because we do have 151 fuel for Nike, that is a huge possibility if he goes for tanks that he could produce quite a few of them. The Grenadiers of the Panzerstrikes getting right on in there, taking a few shots on the mortar placement, doing quite a bit of damage. <laughs> oh my gosh, landing on a mine on the retreat. Just when that's the last thing you want when you're on the retreat and you're losing guys. Last thing you want to do is land on a mine because that just ruins that just ruins the day of the guys that are retreating. Now, just looking at the uh, sappers with their advanced repair from their wrenches, look at that, how fast that mortar is getting uh, repaired just from one squad. That is crazy. Imagine if you had two of those squads, it'd be repaired in no time at all. The Puma's doing so much damage. Six kills so far on this Puma alone. The M8 with four kills and this Puma with six kills. So in combined uh, unison, both Pumas with six kills, each of them. Veteran C2 out on... The Pumas. So at Veteran C2, I believe they get a sight range increase. So kind of interesting that they do that. At another ver Veteran C, so at Veteran C3, I believe they also get a damage increase of about 30%. So the Nurburgring is just shooting its uh, little <laughs> shots down. Its shells landing right on top of the emplacement, but not really damaging it. Quite surprisingly, um, despite there being flames right on top of the emplacement, it's not taking it much damage, if any, at all. The 25 pounds are just responding in some sort of uh, retaliation attacks, trying to hit the Nurbelwerfer, but the Nurbelwerfer just getting out of there in the nick of time. It looks like they have two men out of the three, so it looks like that it's kind of likely they lost a man in that little barrage there. A noble, no, another Nurbelwerfer from Rom Jim just taking some shots down on the center side. What is this over here? Nothing much. This was an HQ gl uh, glider. I believe it was, but maybe this was part of the map. Yes, this was actually a default object that is not part of the Brits. Uh, this glider, however, was part of the Brits, and the Brits are doing something quite, quite different. They're going in to put a demolition charge down. They're using their smoke screen over here and just going to put it down and harass them, destroy their base. Now, when I used to play the Brits a long time ago, this is probably over two years ago, um, I used to do like to do some funny things and very abusive stuff, and you might be hating me on what I'm about to tell you. But what I like to do with the Brits was actually go for the commandos, and what I would do as fast as possible, go for the commandos, get them in the enemy base, put down loads of demolition charges, and just blow up their base, destroy it that way, and just get a sort of um, premature win. And you know what, it actually works, it's actually a very good strategy for an unsuspecting opponent. However, it's something to be a bit cautious about because the commandos cost a lot after all. It does cost to put those demolition charges, and so you gotta be a bit cautious about it all in general. So the Pumas responding to these commandos who are being so harassive on the enemy base. The commandos just retreating in the nick of time. However, the Puma looks like it's gonna be on full chase going for these commandos. What's happening on this side? Just a bit of a movement, no action. But on the full chase of these commandos, the commandos going to look like um, be able to get away, however, because they haven't lost any men. Both of these bunkers in the uh, Vermont base were destroyed, so the commandos can get back in there without any hassle from those MG bunkers, without even needing to get any... Um, any of their smoke, smoke screen down. So, kind of an engagement over here. The Grenadiers try to get in, do some damage. However, uh, there is quite a bit of a force. A Cromo on the field, so that means we have an armored command truck somewhere. Yes, it's right here by Nike. The Grenadiers just one more shot away from taking out the mortar, and there you go. Enemy. The mortar just exploding into sandbags. The guys go flying. Wow. A bit of a harassive sort of attack there, just trying to do some damage at the uh, best that it can possibly do. Um, a bit of a firestorm coming down from who could it be? Possibly Rom Jim. Yes, it is Rom Jim. So Rom Jim has opted out for his uh, terror doctrine. That's why we see the firestorm coming down. 
and leaving a big patch, a big circular patch of uh, <laughs> burning uh, soil. But all in all, the uh, Brits are holding a quite a defensive line. It's kind of surprising not seeing more offensive um, aggressions going about the field. The left-hand side is being recapped by the Wehrmacht. I would actually like to see the uh, commandos get back in on here and re-attack this this enemy base. Putting down two demolition charges, I believe one wouldn't be enough, but two demolition charges by the commandos should be enough to actually take out that uh, Sturm Armory and uh, take down more of those bases. It's all about just annoying your opponent. So even one of those commando squads in that base and then focusing the rest of your armies elsewhere on the map could really put quite a stressive toll on your opponent because they have to keep their base alive after all. Uh, they have to choose between keeping their base alive or um, keep on fighting on their front and losing their strategic points. So all you want to do is just keep on putting pressure on your opponent. The pack doing some shots on the Cromwell. What is this? Some sort of artillery going down, possibly due to um, what's his face. If we switch on over to Conklin, yes, from his artillery barrage, constantly going down his uh, doctrinal tree, just activating that. Um, no decoy being used because a, a real one was used just now. It's obviously going to be a fake if it was called down. So the Cromwell's being very smart. I like what Conklin is doing. He's just retreating his tanks even though they're bad um, when they're badly damaged. <laughs> and both all of these squads being suppressed and pinned down to the ground by the Nurblewerfer. So I really like that use of the Nurblewerfer there. Um, the great thing about the Nurblewerfer is that it pins down people. It suppresses them. And the fact that you have the incendiary on the ground and the people pinned down in that the area, it's just going to be a burning mess of bodies. you got to retreat. You have to pretty much retreat. You can't move out of there but since you're suppressed and pinned and you're taking so much damage from the flames. So two Cromwells being repaired up from the... Um, from the sappers, as you guys can see, just absolutely insane. One squad alone, as fast as they repair, that is a lot of um, repairing very, very, very fast. Another, what is this, a Chromo command tank coming out from Conklin, so he's not opted out for his, um, his TOV, Tales of Valor units. He has not gone for his Staghound, nor his Kangaroos. So I'm not exactly sure if that is down to uh, preference or if he doesn't have TOV. But you know, all in all, the Chromo and the Chromo command tank are very useful for us. I like seeing that sort of stuff. So, two Pumas engaging the Riflemen over here. The Riflemen are not going to be able to do anything. I don't know why he's bothering to keep on fighting them. As you guys can see, just doing no damage whatsoever. Possibly due to a um, being elsewhere on the map at the moment. But what is this? Another Firestorm coming down. Badly damaging a load of guys. Taking out quite a number of infantry. Taking out the 25 pound howitzer. The Nurblewerfer and the Firestorm doing a huge amount of damage on these guys. And I love this. The over repaired headquarters command truck from those sappers. So just their ability but since they have the uh, wrench. They can... Um, over repair stuff and so if your headquarters is going to be so close to the battlefield you might as well have that extra HP on there anyway. thing about uh, over repair is that it has a threshold on its um, bonus HP that it gains from over repair and that basically reduces the HP that is over repaired over the course of time so it won't last forever however you can get a minimum bonus out of that possibly like plus 75 health or something something small like that okay so we have ultra decryption from uh, Conklin that is why we see on the left hand side all these markers coming out from the Wehrmacht so kind of strange to see that from the allies but that is ultra decryption working at its best from the Royal Commandos Doctrine and what that does is it allows you to see what your opponents are building um, and that is sort of an interesting thing in itself to talk about. Now, a lot of players don't actually uh, believe that Ultra Decryption is useful. They actually believe it's one of the most useless abilities in the game. And in some respects, yes, how it does not help you in terms of combating. But in terms of scouting, it does help you because you know what your opponent is about to do, what he is going to build. I, could, I definitely believe if this was StarCraft, then yes, it would help a lot uh, scouting. However, this is not StarCraft, this is Company of Heroes where the battle on the field, on the battlefield, is the most important thing. And what you can expect, you can pretty much 
uh, predict almost by yourself if you have experience in the game. So the Sherman just badly damaged, throwing on its uh, allied war machine. That means Nike must have gone for armor doctrine. He had to. Um, and wow, just uh, putting that down in the nick of time. Obviously, none of the Wehrmacht are aggressing on the Sherman anymore, just so that if, if it's destroyed, he would get it back for free. Instead, what they're doing is retreating and letting it stay alive so that the Allied War Machine is wasted. All that 200 ammunition, I believe, if you switch on over to Nike, all that uh, 200 ammunition is wasted, so now he has to go get it repaired. So that Sherman uh, Sherman just got in there, brand new, hot off the press, hot off the uh, <laughs> building line, whatever you want to call it, and just being absolutely almost taken out there. The sniper going down uh, by the commandos, being absolutely mulled apart by their by their guns, very powerful guns indeed. The MG uh, suppressing them, they just got to get on out of there. The Puma chasing them down, three guys left to kill, so it's going to be quite iffy if the Puma is going to manage to do that. Two guys left, but entering enemy territory now, so not bothering to chase them down anymore. So Conklin with his uh, headquarters command truck, strange, could it have been destroyed? Possibly. It looks like it might have been destroyed, I doubt he would have picked it up like that, but it looks like um, he's going to be putting it down right behind the building now, just to give him a bit of cover rather than having it on the edge where he can still have quite a bit of flak from the enemy. So Panzer Grenadiers, or the Grenadiers should I say, they are not the PE, they are the normal Wehrmacht Grenadiers, getting on in there, trying to do a bit of damage, but instead being met by a bunch of rockets. <laughs> oh gosh, the Ragdoll Physics getting in on the action, just look at these guys just lobbing themselves in the air. Um, that is a Havoc, Havoc uh, physics engine at its best. I believe the Havoc physics engine was in Crisis as well, and if you guys played Crisis, you would know that there's quite a bit of Ragdoll physics in there as well. Okay, so the, um, the Wehrmacht had to retreat there after losing quite a bit of their Grandiers from a Calliope barrage. So the Calliope is somewhere on the map at the moment. I haven't looked for him yet, but he is there, so do not worry. The Brits are putting down their putting down their headquarters elsewhere on the map. Where could they put, be putting it? They could be putting it on the munitions point, and it does look like they may be able to just before the pioneers are going to be able to decap it. Is he going to be able to do it in time? This is more exciting than an actual battle. Oh my god, will we be able to? Will we be able to? And no! Conklin not realizing that in the nick of time. It looks like the pioneers will have to be killed and are chased away and that point recap before the HQ can go down on there. Likewise, you could put it elsewhere on the map. Okay, if we just look on down at the south side, I believe there was some sort of structure, at least on the mini map it shows something, but nothing over there. Uh, the Wehrmacht moving in with some more Grenadiers, Veteran C3 on them, so they have their elite armor, they have their bonus health, 20%. Um, and yeah, sort of interesting stuff to see from that. Obviously, they're going to be very hardy to kill. Is there a medic bunker somewhere? Enemy yes, there is a medic bunker, so I like seeing that. If you're going to invest so much into your infantry, you might as well go for your 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 uh, thingy, your medic bunker. Okay, so if you switch on over to Mr. Sony Black, he still has no doctrinal choice. Wow. So seven command points, still nothing chosen. Thing about command points is that the more you have, the slower the uh, gain of the rate of gain of your command points. So if you start having seven like this, you're going to be gaining them quite slowly. So what a lot of players like to recommend, a lot of pro, pro players what like they uh, like to recommend is that you spend your points as soon as possible so that you gain more over the time. This uh, anti-tank gun taking a bit of fire damage. One guy going down. The fire still continuing, still simmering. Could they lose another guy? Ooh, no, they don't. Uh, it's kind of an iffy thing because that is a Veteran C2 anti-tank gun. So you got to take extra careful attention of that. So lots and lots of tanks by Conklin. One Sherman Firefly just going down. But still quite a number of tanks. The pack just two close to the action at the moment, being aggressed on by the Sherman, taking a few shots on his frontal armor, one guy going down, the next guy going down, the last guy committing suicide in the last sort of desperation 
Um, obviously does not believe life is uh, valuable enough without his teammates, his men by his side, his friends, his mates, whatever you want to call it. Very sad indeed. But Sherman just doing a bit of damage, just being a bit careful, keeping its distance just in case if there's going to be any other Grenadiers or any other packs on the field. Just does not want to get himself destroyed. Veteran C3 on the Rifleman going to be very deadly with their damage, 150%. Um, veteran C2 on the Nurple Verfer. Uh, loads and loads of veterans. Actually, <laughs> this is too much to comment on, really. The Calypid Rush hitting exactly pinpoint the right targets. I believe he didn't even see where these uh, men were. Men were. I, d I don't believe the um, Calypid actually knew where uh, you know all these men were coming. That they were going to be there, but just being quite lucky and landing right on top of them. And oh my gosh, entire Volksgrandier squad being killed there. A Stug being aggressed. The Sherman landing right on top of a mine, yet he's still pushing forward. Wow, this is a brave Sherman. Um, kind of an iffy thing for a Sherman to uh, be continue moving on like that, despite um, having a badly damaged engine. Especially when you got Grenadiers like this closing in. And the side armor revealed, and no, the Sherman goes down. So the only reason that the uh, Nike activated our, um, the field repairs was so that Sherman could get repaired and instead the wreck has maintains its wrench over it instead uh, the field repair is being absolutely useless there and uh, being wasted because be that Sherman was destroyed so a bit of capping, capping on the left hand side by some engineers capping away on the right hand side by Conklin and Sony Black and Mr. Rom Jim they are being quite pushed on. If we look at the points, they're getting sort of circled by, in terms of territory, everything is falling apart. The commando's just about, wow, very close on taking out that sniper. If that sniper was um, not so good at being so cautious, they could have actually taken out that sniper. But a forced retreat activated on the on the commandos landing on a mine as they fall back. That is the propaganda war, 100 ammunition to do so. Kind of an iffy thing to be spending 100 ammunition on that, but why not? If you want to do that, go for it. So, in an M10 aggressing the Stug, the Stug just reversing itself as fast as possible because obviously the Stug cannot shoot. It does not have a rotatable turret like the other tanks. It has to rotate its entire body. So, the M10 with its very high penetration against um, the tanks, doing a very good job, even against the front armor of the Stug. Absolutely massacring it and taking it out. That penetration, by doing so, you do a lot more damage to a tank. So the Fireflies moving in, to get in together with the uh, Cromwell and the Cromwell Command Tank. So uh, a force of its own. Just moving in, just trying to do something. But it looks like what they're trying to do something against as retreating. <laughs> oh god, a Grenadier squad being taken out by the sniper on retreat. So loads and loads of losses and casualties for the Wehrmacht. Very much so on the back foot. Lo um, the Grenadiers just constantly trying to push forward. Trying to do some casualties on their opponent, but having a very difficult time. I'm surprised this bunker, this medic bunker, has not been taken out yet by the Brits. Especially the fact that there was a 25 pound howitzer. It's back despite the fact that there's a Calliope, and despite the fact that there's multiple tanks on the field. You should really focus on the uh, meta bunker if you're the allies. Obviously destroying it will put you in a better position over the long run. This looks like an artillery barrage coming down on top of Sony Black on his pack, but the pack just being very cautious and getting out of there in the nick of time. And this is what we had to expect from Mr. Rom Jim. Rom Jim with the with the uh, terror doctrine. He obviously had to get that King Tiger sooner or later, right? And there it is. So that beast of a tank has made his presence on the field. It is always a sort of uh, scary thing to see a tiger, a King Tiger on the field. When you got a lot of riflemen, it's sort of okay because you know you can throw stickies on it. But just the fact alone that there's a King Tiger on the field is sort of a scary presence. It's, it's just uh, an un unwelcoming thing to see on the map. So both opponents, all the uh, men focusing on the M10, even though its gun was destroyed, even though its uh, engine was destroyed, 
Um, they still decided to take it out, kind of an iffy thing, uh, since it was basically useless and Allied War Machine was activated. You might as well just focus on another tank, the one that has the gun still intact. But the King Tiger, very badly damaged. Oh gosh, two stick is coming down. This looks like it could be immobilized. No, it is not immobilized, surprisingly. That is kind of rare. Usually if we see so many um, stickies coming down on a tank, they get uh, get their treads broken or a very badly damaged engine. But instead, he managed to survive that little onslaught of stickies. Very interesting to see that. The Panther moving in to support, although very badly damaged himself. A lot of action going on the field at the moment. There's Calliope barrages, there's the Grenadiers moving in forward, there's the um, heavy tanks moving on backwards to get repaired. I'd like to see more Pioneers, I'd like to see another possibly, no I suppose one um, tank repair uh, bunker will be okay. But I'd like to probably see more Pioneers just in order to repair these uh, tanks up. So Rom Jim is focusing on <laughs> getting some ammunition from the Rex. He's got 155, obviously plus 5 every now and then from the Rex. It's going to help a lot. That's quite a bit of ammunition from each Rex. And, you know, 175, he obviously can't use much right now. He can use Firestorm once, he can use Propaganda War once, but all those ammunitions obviously help. So, no defenses whatsoever on the bunker. What could the Vermog do against this? If they keep on pushing for their tanks, as long as they keep the tanks' health up, health up and they get more anti-infantry, um, then they'll do a good job. It's just unfortunate because there's so much uh, anti-infantry in terms of the commandos on the field and the Grenadiers are going to have such a hard time at combating them, especially when they got the Panzer Shreks. What I would really like to see is more anti-infantry, possibly in, in the form of tanks, possibly in the form of Volks Grenadiers with uh, MP40s. I mean, there's veterancy out on, on the infantry, so it is all a viable option to get. But the counterattack coming in force, the Vermont moving in, the bunker just about to be destroyed. I'm surprised the Brits did not focus their last few tank shells into uh, taking this out. Instead, the medic is managing to pick up one more guy, uh, just so that there's two more required to make another Grand Deer squad. So that is what I mean by long-term investment. It helps a lot, eh? I suppose you guys can't really argue that. It helps indeed. So the Rifleman taking some damage from a nearby mortar of some sorts. Yes, the mortar out from Rom Jim. And the Americans don't seem to realize it. Instead, they're losing quite a number of guys. So very brave guys, despite they, they are being bombed by shells of mortars. They're just staying very intent on capturing that point. But now they have retreated after capturing it. Let's take a look at the points. 219 for the um, Wehrmacht and 298 for the Allies. So the Wehrmacht are being pushed back on the mom at the moment, but this is this is the hard thing about this map, or just um, when you're in this position. If your enemy, if the Allies have such a good defensive line, then it's going to be quite hard to push on the center VP and capture it. Whoever can capture it and set up a defensive line and maintain it is obviously going to be doing very well for themselves. So the Allies definitely have that defensive line. They have multiple tanks, multiple anti-infantry. They have even artillery from the Calliope's. So obviously it's going to be very difficult to capture that middle of VP for the um, Axes. But the Calliope coming down everywhere. Damaging the guys who were repairing the King Tiger. The King Tiger is just about at full health. It just um, as soon as it reaches 100%. Um, health, it will be able to get its full working engine again. In the meantime, until then, it has its damaged engine. So, a propaganda war on the infantry sections. Obviously, the Wehrmacht, if your opponent... Say, for example, if your opponent is the Wehrmacht, um, and they keep on using propaganda war, then it means that it's sort of an act of, act of desperation, if they keep on doing that. But anyway, officer on the field, this is very <laughs> strange. I think in every single game I've ever casted, I've never seen an officer. No, in fact, I've never seen an officer on the field. I've, okay, I personally, if we're going to be talking about the officer, I've hardly used the officer at all in my four or five years of experience with this game. Um, that just speaks for itself, and it's kind of a qu common consensus amongst uh, Vermont players and all players, is that the officer is quite limited in what he can do, so much to the fact that it's kind of viable not to even go for him. 
So the two pa Panthers are just damaging the Cromwells. The officer, by the way, has a variety of abilities. Um, he has that pistol. I'm not exactly sure if he can do an execution attack. I believe that might have been uh, Company of Heroes Online. I can't really remember for sure, as the officer is definitely something that not many players get. However, it is able to call down a, um, a mortar barrage, and it is also able to uh, use a forced retreat. So kind of an interesting thing. Obviously, it brings a lot of strategical options. If you don't go for terror, you can have a sort of uh, retrieve propaganda war of your own. But the officer just getting in on there, recapping the center point. Loads of action here. The Grenadiers moving in. The men just having a standoff over here. But this is the main center of action. This is what I like seeing. The one, what was this? The Sherman Firefly? Yes, it was the Firefly going down. The Calliope responding and trying to do some damage. But the Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers, so many of them with the Panzer Shreks doing a lot of damage to the Calliopes. The um, Panthers getting in right on in there. However, Allied War Machine is activated. This is becoming an iffy thing to destroy or not to destroy. That is the question as Sha William Shakespeare not so famously quoted him on saying there it was to be or not to be to destroy or not to destroy and that one is Sher uh, Sherman Calliope was destroyed but it had a veteran C2 on it so it is not going to get back that veteran C2 um, that Panther was immobilized by Sticky so all this luck factor coming in just the King Tiger alone takes so many stickies to even immobilize it, but the Panther just one or two stickies to immobilize it, so very interesting. Wow, the Panther, both of them going down in a shred of wrecks. The King Tiger moving in on into the Allies' uh, front. What we saw was a lot of action on the right-hand side. It seemed like um, quite an even battle. Both uh, sides suffered quite heavy losses. However, the King Tiger was just moving in on the left-hand side to make do of the moment whilst there was quite a distraction on the right-hand side. However, the Americans are recouping on... are recouping uh, with their M10s. They're trying to take out the King Tiger. King Tiger so badly damaged. Oh my gosh. Rear armor shots going off on the King Tiger from the M10. This is looking very bad. There's an uh, anti-tank gun. There's stickies. And no! The King Tiger is out of control. Oh gosh, no. Just the horror, there's no PE on the field to even get it back. Oh man. This is looking so bad for the uh, Wehrmacht. I mean, this King Tiger was holding the the fight together for the, for the uh, Wehrmacht. And just from that King Tiger alone and being a bit smart with their attack maneuvers, they have managed to cap away at over half of the map. So half of the map back in control for the uh, Wehrmacht. Uh, the Brits just trying to solidify their positions over here, putting down a trench. They got it just in the nick of time, just right at the uh, right moment. However, a grenade coming down or two from the Grenadiers, forcing the uh, commandos to get on out of the trenches, uh, deleting it before they got out, just so their opponents could not take control of it. But the commandos getting right on in there, on the Grenadiers. Grenadiers just responding with a bit of assault grenade, so I do believe switch on over to Sonny Black. He did go for his Blitzkrieg, that is why we saw the assault grenades, and that is why we see the Tiger! So the Tiger not as good as the King Tiger, uh, but it is still a deadly force of its own. So the Tiger will do a lot of devastation. The good thing about Tiger is that you can call it onto the map more than once, not at a time. However, if it is destroyed, you can call it on more than once, so I do really like seeing that. So I suppose it will make up a bit for the King Tiger's loss. The Tiger doing a ton of damage against the Cromwell. The Cromwell using its overdrive ability to try and get on out of there. And yes, it is getting on out of there. Even though it's reversing and that is much slower than heading on forward. It is still able to outrun the Tiger. But the uh, men in hot pursuit of the Cromwell, will they be able to take it out? Hmm, who knows? There are quite a variety, quite a batch of grenadiers and yes they are able to take out that Cromwell the tiger taking a little bit of damage from the Sherman Firefly however nothing serious there is a Knights Crossholder squad from the tank depot out moving in just to support the tank a bit more 
I'd like to see these guys start to head on in front. They could possibly be used a bit here. There is quite a bit of aggression, so what we saw over here was that um, one, possibly two Cromwells, I believe just one Cromwell was destroyed. And so, but there are still two Sherman Fireflies doing a lot of damage to the Tiger. The Tiger having a difficult time reversing actually into the tree here, which prevented him from even to uh, keep on moving. Oh no! The Tiger just not <laughs> very incorrect maneuvering of its treads, of its movement, had forced itself to be uh, trapped by the uh, Fireflies and destroyed. Very big losses for the Wehrmacht. Two Calliopes for the Allies. Still loads of um, men for loads of units that the uh, Allies have. So this is going to be very hard to combat. Okay. But still, quite a bit of territory in the Wehrmacht hands. Just moving the snipers about, seeing if they can scout ahead, see if there's anything happening. The MG firing a little bit of damage, suppressive volley fires. The Wehrmacht moving in, just taking some points on the left hand side. And not much else really, all is quiet. Both sides are recuperating. And the Pershing is on the field. So the Pershing, the last thing that the Wehrmacht really wanted. Because the Pershing is going to be so good at taking out any future tanks, um, it's going to be great to combat the Tiger, uh, if any more come out. And the Pershing in its own right is going to be quite a fortress of its own. So both sides just recuperating their losses, regaining some ground, reorganizing themselves for the next attack to come. Nurburgers firing down a little bit to weaken the spots. The MG from the Amer uh, Allies from the Brits it looked like just um, taking some casualties there and retreating away however without the gun that is quite unusual there we go the gun is back on wow setting itself down again that is very strange could it be a bug maybe it what it was but anyway so more fighting going on in the center the uh, Wehrmacht with their Knights Crossholders and the Grenadiers just combating away the Calliope firing some shots just behind the Wehrmacht just so they could uh, take on any of those Grenadier squads whilst the commandos are running away. So this is kind of an iffy thing. I mean, the Americans, the Allies have so much uh, units at the moment, such a big diversity. They have Clypees, they have Pershing, they have various infantry on the field, various tanks. But likewise, there is medic bunkers, there is repair bunkers, there's uh, loads of infantry, loads of uh, different stuff from the uh, Panther as well, loads of different stuff from the Wehrmacht, so it is quite open to who could win this, though. I definitely like to see. But the commandos just, I think they might have been trying to capture the Nurburgerfer, but luckily they didn't because they were about to be absolutely taken out by those, uh, by the Grenadiers here. But the Grenadiers just taking out this HQ glider, or this glider, should I say, just to prevent it from uh, any future any future opportunities to produce guys out of there if it go goes in the hands of the enemy territory. And so more Nurburgers for shots coming down. And the light last fights. So if we look at the timer, 47 minutes, 29 seconds into the game, so there's not much time left. However, it's still open to anyone winning this. Really, there could be a comeback of some sort, a major comeback, no doubt. The pack being taken out by uh, various infantry here. The Volks Grandiers or the Grandiers just retreating away. Clypey finishing off the last guys and forcing them to retreat. Now, what an absolute light show. It's like fireworks on the ground almost. But the Panther, the Z Panther, being aggressed on by the M10 and the Pershing! With field repairs activated, oh my gosh, this is so bad for the Panther. Obviously, both tanks are going to do a lot of damage against it. And with field repairs, it really doesn't ha help at all because you may be damaging the tanks. However, they just get their uh, their health right on back. And instead, what we see is the Panzer IV coming out. Obviously, um, I believe, who could it be? Some 
Rom Jim quite low on fuel, so indeed low on fuel and wants to invest in something. But wow, that was quite surprising to see the Panther and the Panzer IV doing a very good job against that Pershing and managing to take it out, surprisingly enough. The M10 just about to be taken out, so both the M10 and the Pershing were taken out after the Panther was lost. So the Americans suffering much more losses there than the Wehrmacht. However, the Wehrmacht are quite low on their fuel. Panther yet again wanting more fighting, more engagements, fighting on the Sherman Firefly. However, not going to do much against two Sherman Fireflies and a Cromwell Command Tank. That is going to be a lot of damage and a lot of damage coming down quickly as well. So as you guys can see, the Pioneers just too slow to even uh, think about getting this repaired in time. And yes, just being taken out by the Sherman Fireflies. The Sherman Fireflies so good against enemy armor. And that is what we saw there, and the Panzer IV just going down from one single shot from the Sherman Firefly. All the tanks of the uh, Wehrmacht are just missing on the field, nothing left for them, their base is just about to be uh, hit. Uh, the Pioneers are capturing some of, the, um, some of the munitions from the wreck, salvaging it, should I say. However, the Brits are being very cautious, they do not want to move in forward too fast. They just took out quite a, a bit of guys, and they don't want to lose any more of their own, or else it just will set them back as well. Last few engagements. So Rom Jim and Sony Black Reborn on the fallback. These commandos being so harassive. What I'd like to see is possibly a demo charge somewhere, just so that the uh, Grandiers could be lured into it. But the Grandiers having to retreat. Another squad getting on in there. But the Wehrmacht being pushed back so much. 155 for the Wehrmacht. 167 for the uh, Allies. And yet even more uh, <laughs> commandos coming down. Really the last thing that the uh, Wehrmacht need. A good game coming down from Rom Jim because all we had left was just vehicles, or not vehicles, all we had left was infantry from the Wehrmacht and no vehicles. So just the commandos coming down is just going to be too much for the Wehrmacht to handle, despite the fact that they have medics picking up guys. So 51 minutes long, quite a decently long game that one was, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if we're going to be talking about strategies, I love what the uh, Brits and the Americans were doing. They're just working together in unison. And so were the Ver Wehrmacht. They had quite a mirror strategy in the beginning of the game. However, it did not work out for them because, well, first off, they lost the King Tiger. Um, and they lost a various amount of guys. What they could definitely have used was more anti-infantry. Uh, pretty much the entire game they had loads of Grandiers, of Panzer Shreks and anti-tank. That wouldn't have helped against all those uh, commandos, for example. So I, that's what I would recommend. But obviously both of them are very good players and very much so a good replay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I believe my next uh, game or replay, I'm not even sure what to call it at the moment, might be something a of a new thing for most of you. It's going to be a continuation on with my how-to series. I want to do something that a user recommended me on the channel, and that is to give out some tips in terms of hotkeys. So I might try that next. But anyway, this is Krebs Kohu, and I will see you guys later. Have a nice day!